Next up, uh, known and less known methods of user tracking by Dayan Sterbad. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, so, uh, the topic uh, of my talk today is maybe misleading, but uh, I'll let you be the judge uh, of it. Uh, idea is to go uh, through uh, methods available, uh, don't go into too much technical details, uh, discuss why uh, it's important and why it matters, and uh, also uh, I'll uh, just uh, I, I, uh, at the end, I'll focus on one novel method, which is interesting to me, and uh, I've been working a lot with it. Uh, that's uh, DNS uh, cache-based uh, user tracking, which is uh, interesting because you don't need browser, and you can abuse uh, cache on your PC uh, to store sensitive data, or in this case, a uh, unique uh, cookie which identifies user. Uh, it works cross-browser, in private mode, and so on. But we will get uh, to that. Uh, so, who am I? Uh, well, uh, slide says it all. Uh, lately, m I've been mostly working with uh, machine learning on the edge devices, uh, especially on anomaly detection uh, in area of uh, industrial co control systems. Uh, feel free to ping me. Uh, why this talk today and in general interest in the uh, area of uh, privacy? Uh, that goes uh, to my limited government and political transparency advocacy. I was involved in uh, Mozilla and uh, in European Students for uh, Liberty. Uh, now, let's start with questions. Uh, do you have something to hide? Who has something to hide? Everybody. Let me see your hands. <laughs> okay. Uh, do you care about your privacy, online privacy and privacy in general, or you don't care? Who cares? Let me see your hands. <laughs> okay, good. And uh, are you taking uh, any actions uh, about your privacy? Are you trying to, I mean, what are you doing to uh, try to hide uh, your activity, let's say? Let's put it that way. Uh, any volunteers to share your experience? Okay. For example, uh, blocking access to the uh, Google DNS. Okay. So on on, the, on that. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, the guy over there also. <laughs> no. Okay. Let's move forward then. So uh, whatever you do. Uh, it leaves, obviously, digital footprints. Uh, it goes on uh, multiple uh, levels from ISP providers, their infrastructure, DNS servers. I mean, people believe if they use, for example, Google servers, they are fine. Some of them believe Cloudflare is fine, but nothing is uh, secure and data is being collected and you can be pinpointed. Uh, also, uh, quite big threat and we all uh, use them, our public Wi-Fi hotspots, because uh, not only they collect data about you, they can get uh, data uh, which uh, uniquely identifies your uh, hardware devices, for example, but also uh, they can inject uh, content, they can inject uh, uh, ads, uh, they can uh, collect uh, what you did, what you looked uh, into over their public networks, and uh, they can share those data. Usually things that are free, there's a reason why those things are free. E-commerce sites, some of uh, us probably like the fact that uh, recommendation engines are doing uh, their job. Some of you uh, don't like it. Uh, wearable devices and IoT devices are even worse because, for example, uh, this device on my hand is measuring my uh, heart rate and uh, that's pretty valuable data, for example, for uh, insurance companies. I don't, even, I don't even need to know that they share data, but when I come to insurance company and ask for insurance, uh, they'll probably have leverage on me without me even knowing it. So uh, that's uh, not fun. Uh, news portals are uh, also quite interesting, especially now when uh, fake news, disinformation and similar uh, things are popular, let's say. Uh, so, uh, by collecting uh, information about you on uh, news portals, news portals are usually linked to 
uh, social networks. Uh, pretty interesting uh, profiles can be built and uh, they can be and they are uh, used in marketing purposes which is let's say normal but they can also be uh, used to uh, to interfere for example in election processes uh, and also one uh, let's say uh, quite primitive uh, example uh, electric consumption patterns I'm pretty sure that uh, my pattern is uh, quite different than uh, anyone else uh, here uh, in the room. So uh, data is everywhere. Uh, we are leaving uh, digital footprints uh, ev everywhere. So yesterday we heard a talk uh, where uh, GSM devices or tracking devices were discussed, uh, but uh, they are uh, the tip of the iceberg actually. So, uh, as a result of all the data and all the, the digital uh, footprints uh, left, uh, there's a bunch of uh, data collected and uh, that uh, could potentially or usually is a problem. Uh, so, some of uh, the most uh, known, let's say, uh, examples of, uh, let's say, misuse of data are Cambridge Analytica, uh, Okay, here's the example with Brexit, but uh, also, uh, I mean, it's, it's not, Cam uh, everyone is talking about Cambridge Analytica, but if you ask me, Cambridge Analytica itself is not a problem. Uh, I mean, Obama, uh, during his elections, he uh, used Facebook, he used data from Facebook, uh, he, he had a data scientist, he had a big infrastructure, so he was also using all the technology available to try to win. Now when uh, Trump did the, basically the same thing, now it's the problem and now everybody talks about it. Of course, uh, it's something to be discussed and it's something that's questionable, but uh, the thing is that not only the Trump or Brexit are the problem because we don't like it, the problem is uh, uh, bigger than that. Uh, so uh, other example would be uh, foreign uh, election interference. So. Uh, on the internet, uh, I mean, to, to have access to some of the data I mentioned in, in earlier uh, uh, post, uh, uh, you don't have to uh, have access to uh, ISP providers, to uh, big government, to uh, ask big co corporations for access, because uh, most of the useful data for some of the uh, uh, use cases is uh, already left uh, on the internet. You're posting on Twitter, you're commenting news portals, uh, news, uh, you're, com you're uh, liking things on the internet, uh, you're leaving uh, comments uh, when you're reading or buying things and so on. So uh, things are uh, openly there in the wild and whoever wants and have resources to do it can collect that data and can, can extract uh, knowledge out of it. and if he wants, uh, use it against you. Uh, also, here is an example uh, with uh, disinformation, which is quite interesting in these times. Uh, for example, uh, uh, nowadays uh, you can uh, uh, model virtu virtual reality for uh, each person uh, who is on the internet. Uh, you can do that through uh, targeting him with special, specially crafted ads, and uh, you can also do it by modifying sites. One project I worked on, uh, we used, uh, so, so we, we, we were collecting uh, on one e-commerce site a bunch of uh, data on users. Users were uh, uniquely identified and uh, once we had enough data, we were able to uh, modify content user sees before page is loaded. So basically if you or you or someone else access this page, you were on the page before, uh, everything was from the design, from the content was adapted for your preference. And uh, that can be done uh, in real time, you don't notice uh, anything's going on. Uh, so that's pretty creepy and uh, that, 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 that's for example what uh, was uh, extremely abused uh, during uh, Trump uh, political campaign. And uh, in past days, I've heard everyone is uh, against government. That's fine, but uh, the government is not uh, the only issue. I mean, uh, you have big corporations, you have different interest groups, and pretty much uh, any of them 
is interested in your data and would like to gain uh, something out of it. So uh, thing is, uh, not only government is the problem. So some say that uh, data is power or toxic waste or new oil. It depends again on the uh, viewpoint. Uh, but the thing is that uh, w w what people uh, don't understand, at least most of them, probably you do, uh, is that uh, once you have a bunch of data, you can get uh, information, valuable knowledge out of it. So you may think it's irrelevant if you liked some page, but it is uh, relevant, especially for someone who is, for example, uh, looking into for example, public uh, party uh, public page. They are interested in likes. They are interested in sentiment. So, how how people are reacting uh, to things they are uh, publishing and so on. And that's all valuable information. That's valuable information for uh, PR companies. That's valuable information for uh, foreign governments. That that's valuable uh, uh, information probably for some other companies who who can get uh, leverage out of it. Uh, now. All data contains knowledge, and knowledge can be used and abused. That's uh, how things go, and uh, that's uh, something uh, normal. We, we sh should not run away from the devices. We should not uh, be angry about it. We simply need to be aware of it, and we simply need uh, to... Uh, I mean, w w once you get aware that uh, how things work, uh, for example, someone who uh, wants to abuse you cannot use the same trick. So if people start to ask themselves when they see some, uh, for example, news, is this new, uh, uh, they, they, they start to question uh, things that are uh, listed as facts. Uh, at that moment, uh, fake news and this information won't be the problem. Okay, that's not trivial to achieve, but uh, that's, in, if you ask me, a uh, solution to this problem. So some of the attempts to keep uh, privacy uh, on the internet and to try to avoid being tracked and uh, your data, data being used against you are listed here. Uh, none of them is perfect uh, and uh, honestly I'm not sure uh, if it's worth it even to use it. For example, uh, one example people, people usually uh, prefer to use is uh, VPN and uh, VPN is far, far, far away from uh, silver bullet. See, here are some examples. Also, guys uh, in previous talk had good points. So, uh, 99 VPN products are run by uh, same 23 companies. Uh, other interesting thing is that, uh, I mean, if the VPN servers are in uh, China and Russia, or Russia, I mean, if they ask you, uh, you for data, you will give it. I mean, that goes by default. They are sharing uh, data with governments and also it's in interest of foreign uh, governments to get people to use VPNs that are hosted in their, their countries. Here's the example uh, with uh, US where senators uh, are discussing uh, to put more control into uh, how things uh, will be, uh, how they will control their uh, citizens, how they use VPN servers because uh, they tend to use uh, Russian VPN servers and once traffic is out of United States, okay, not, they cannot get to it, let's say, but uh, foreign governments have that data and they can abuse it and uh, conduct uh, statewide uh, attacks and so on. So whatever you do, you can run, but you can hide. Uh, you, you can... Uh, I mean, uh, the, the thing is uh, that, uh, okay, you will stay anonymous to some point, but you'll be uniquely identified. Uh, you will be uniquely identified by the data you will generate, generate in the process. Uh, not only that, that's, uh, that, 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 that's usually data you generate uh, using electronic devices and so on. But uh, there's one other thing, and that's uh, behavioral patterns. Uh, the way I use my uh, mouse, uh, the, ba the way I, the order in which I search uh, for the content on the internet, the way I type, th that's everything what identifies me and makes me unique. And the thing is that uh, you can combine all the data you have and uh, then you're unique. 
for sure, and uh, then the uh, and then uh, it's uh, only matter of time when your an anonymous uh, unique ID uh, will be unified with your real name, with your real uh, ID. Uh, I mean, people are uh, creatures of habit, and uh, sooner or later uh, you will fail. I mean, if uh, as we saw in uh, yesterday's talk, uh, CIA, CIA agents. Uh, fail, uh, intelligence agents fail, uh, I don't see a reason why wouldn't uh, normal uh, everyday people uh, fail. So the question is, uh, should we return to caves or uh, should we fight it? What do you think? Who thinks that we should, should return to caves? <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> okay, so uh, again, this is a battle between good and evil, and good and evil is in the eye of the viewer, again. Laws may help, but I don't believe in laws in the way that they can prevent such things and they can prevent abuse, so I don't think that's the solution. I, like I said, I think that the key are the people and the transparency on how we are tracked, what's done with our data, and uh, raising awareness amongst uh, people uh, on that uh, topic. So we should definitely move forward. I mean, the, the amount of data we collect and uh, all the knowledge that's uh, generated out of it uh, is also good. It's not only abused for uh, bad purposes. So we just need to keep uh, that in mind. Uh, so uh, the main idea of this talk was to give some overview of uh, browser uh, tracking. Since uh, browsers are basically our home uh, when we are uh, online. So everything starts and everything goes in browsers. Uh, as you probably know, uh, once you visit uh, some site, you're obviously not just contacted, uh, contacting uh, that site. Your data is being shared between uh, multiple sites. Uh, here's an example of uh, light beam project by uh, Mozilla which uh, basically add on that collects uh, data and uh, presents it uh, to user. Uh, tracking usually wor works through uh, JavaScript injected code which is fine. You can try and disable uh, JavaScript. There are some other ways you can be tracked but the thing is that uh, JavaScript is not only used for tracking. It's basically uh, used for everything uh, on the internet and nowadays if you disable for example JavaScript uh, you, you, I mean web pages and the content is uh, useless uh, so I will just mention and go through uh, details of some of the methods uh, here's the uh, list so uh, the most uh, used one is definitely uh, pixel tags. Uh, they are pretty much uh, everywhere. everywhere. Uh, most of us uh, use uh, HTML for uh, emails and uh, these pixel tags are uh, basically uh, transparent single pixel uh, links to the images which are embedded into, uh, into email content. You open email, that uh, pixel is loaded and it reveals uh, a lot of data uh, about you. Uh, other quite uh, popular uh, method is uh, fingerprinting and uh, focusing, focuses on device fingerprinting. You can get, again, a bunch of different data. Uh, especially interesting uh, for me is uh, when, I mean, you cannot use it uh, in every uh, example, but uh, fingerprinting by the uh, lens dust uh, on camera is pretty interesting approach. And uh, it's uh, especially interesting, for example, if you're using Instagram, I'm pretty sure uh, they're using these methods to gain more information about you. Uh, one more advanced, let's say, uh, fingerprinting uh, method is uh, fingerprinting by uh, canvas. So uh, basically you generate a canvas image with short text uh, and uh, that's rendering in the background based on uh, on uh, your uh, hardware, your, uh, your uh, hardware you have based on a uh, version of browser, based on uh, fonts you have, and some other uh, things, uh, times of uh, render are different, and that basically uh, reveals you and makes you unique. Behavior of fingerprinting, uh, like I said earlier, uh, so uh, 
when a tracking system is integrated uh, on the web page. Uh, among other things, uh, page views are collected, uh, how long you stay on each, uh, how, long, how long you stay on each page is collected, mouse movements, uh, heat maps are made, scrolling speed is looked into. If you leave any comments, that's later on uh, unified with all the data previously connected. So, uh, with combination of all the methods, at some point uh, you are really, really, really uniquely uh, identified, and then it's the matter of time you will uh, log into some page, or uh, you'll do something that will connect you with your personality, with your uh, ID. Uh, the thing is that even if you're uniquely ID, that's useful information because uh, you can again be classified in uh, different groups and attackers or uh, whoever uh, wants to use uh, this leverage uh, can uh, target these groups. So that information is uh, not uh, use, uh, useless. Uh, so once you're identified, you need to be marked somehow and uh, they try to mark you in permanent way. To do so, the most popular method is cookies. Uh, so, uh, cookies, there are different types uh, of cookies. You have super cookies, ever cookies, uh, standard cookies, and so on. Uh, but the thing is, uh, conceptually, they are the same. The only difference is that uh, some cookies are more persistent uh, than others. So, these uh, super cookies and ever cookies, they are abusing different uh, types of uh, storages, uh, there are, some of them are working uh, in combination uh, with uh, backend. Uh, there are attempts that uh, each uh, user, want, uh, once he's identified, he gets a certificate uh, for, for himself. So that's quite permanent. And uh, one, uh, let's say, novel, uh, novel, uh, uh, novel way of uh, Marking you is abusing DNS uh, cache uh, on your uh, PC. Uh, regarding this uh, abuse of DNS cache, uh, basically you can create, I mean, there, there are different ways how to impl implement it. You can uh, have fixed, uh, for example, uh, DNS records, and then you uh, use different combinations uh, of those available, already available DNS records to uh, create unique IDs, unique patterns for uh, your users. Uh, other way is to simply create unique DNS record per user. Okay, there are some downsides for it, but uh, today, technologi te technologically speaking, uh, this is possible, and uh, this is definitely uh, a threat and a method uh, which for sure will be used uh, in uh, coming days. Uh, one thing with uh, DNS cache is that uh, DNS cache uh, don't care about uh, private browsers, different browsers. Uh, it's simply on your computer. Okay, uh, there's a difference uh, between uh, how th that local cache works, uh, but the thing is that uh, it's cached, it can be refreshed and so on, so it's really uh, hard to get rid of it. And, and uh, of course, uh, disabling uh, cache is, uh, doesn't make sense, so you need to live with it. Uh, one other thing is that uh, once you're marked <coughs> with a uh, DNS uh, cookie, let's call it that way, uh, there's no concept of first or third part party cookies. So with uh, HTTP cookies, for example, a Facebook can't access uh, other cookies in your storage, but uh, with DNS cache, if someone knows how to do it, he can uh, access uh, that information. So basically, you can be cross-site tracked once you are marked with uh, this DNS cookie. Uh, it can also be used uh, outside browser environment. So uh, whatever you do on the internet, you are sending a bunch of uh, DNS lookups. So you, you, you are uh, on the internet, you can be marked and uh, you, you can get stored this uh, DNS cookie. Uh, also, uh, these DNS cookies are also, as any, everything, uh, useful. They, they are usually used in DDoS uh, mitigation, but uh, I think they'll have uh, more success uh, to be a thing that's uh, being abused. Uh, 
Uh, of course, limitations uh, are uh, time to leave. Uh, you can set uh, time to leave on your DNS cookie, and usually it works from my experience so far uh, up to 24 hours, uh, but uh, it depends. Chrome browser uh, has different internal policy on, of, uh, on how long they keep uh, uh, on, on uh, respecting uh, TTL. And uh, DNS uh, cache behavior uh, is uh, different on different operating systems and so on. So uh, the method can be used, but uh, you cannot rely 100% on it. You need to combine it with other methods. And uh, that's uh, usually what uh, tracking companies are doing. Uh, local networks, because we are uh, all behind the uh, net, uh, usually uh, complicates uh, things, uh, but uh, despite that, uh, you can pinpoint different people on the same network and uh, uniquely identify them. Uh, on this method, there are uh, very few uh, public uh, resources, uh, so it's interesting uh, ground for work at the moment. Uh, I've been playing a lot with it, uh, but uh, it's uh, still uh, work uh, in progress. Uh, I'm especially uh, trying to hunt down some big company who's, uh, already, who, who's already implemented uh, this kind of uh, tracking, but so far uh, I didn't find any, but uh, I guess they will, that will change uh, in near uh, future. And uh, more technical details on uh, the implementation, uh, variations of this approach and so on, uh, will be saved for uh, some of the upcoming uh, talks. Uh, well, thank you for listening, and if any questions, uh, shoot. Any questions? Uh, what is the best way to uh, spoof browser fingerprinting? Uh, use different browser uh, every time you use, uh, <laughs> so, so you, you do something on the internet. That's probably the, the best way to do it. Other way to do it probably but, but would be to use a virtual machine and browser uh, in it. Okay, but uh, um, doing that on network level, intercepting traffic and modifying. You you can prevent uh, whomever is uh, collecting data on you to not get some amount of data, but still they will get enough to pinpoint you. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's done on uh, multiple levels, so it's really hard to fight it, especially with this DNS uh, thing. Unique DNS uh, uh, cookies can be, okay, obviously some garbage, some uh, hash, uh, some hash, and uh, they can also be some meaningful names. So if you want to do, for example, what, was, what I was trying to do, I was looking into uh, DNS cache, uh, and I was trying to, using machine learning, uh, filter out uh, suspicious uh, DNS records, but uh, that's not uh, bulletproof because uh, whomever is generating them can use meaningful names, especially now when you have a bunch of uh, CDNs, you can say, okay, uh, this, this DNS is uh, something uh, with, uh, that needs a content delivery network and uh, whatever, you know, so it's really hard. Yeah, okay, thanks. <clears throat> Uh, so if you run your own DNS caching on your machine just for like resolving everything you do and you set it to be like long time, maybe 48 hours or so or maybe longer or random for different addresses, would that be like a way around this so your DNS queries don't go out as often or as predictable? That, that would help in a way, but uh, also you're uh, affecting your... Uh, let's say, uh, experience, overall experience. And uh, again, uh, there are different methods uh, that they are used uh, to pinpoint you. So they, they, uh, anyone who's trying to track you uh, won't store just one type of cookie. 
So uh, even if you refresh uh, DNS, they will check, okay, if it's in it. It's not in DNS cache, let's put it uh, again in it. Same goes for uh, browsers and uh, so on. So uh, again, uh, not 100% uh, that you'll run away from this method. Any other questions? Well, thank you and see you at the uh, Rocky Alex.